Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for taking the time to join with us here for Church Online. This is a little bit different, isn't it? Um, and it looks like it's going to be a little bit different for the next BY. This is not how we want to do church, but we're doing it this way. And we want to let you know that we're thinking of you, that we're praying for you, and that we want you to be incredibly blessed today, so we do. We also realise that this is also a special day. This is Mother's Day as well, so all to our mums that are sitting out there watching this, you know, with your kids around you and all and everything, I just pray that you'll just be incredibly blessed by those who love you and who are supporting you as well. This is going to feel a little weird, isn't it? It's going to be weird for you. It's going to be weird for us. But what we're going to do today is we're, we're going to sing. We're going to worship the Lord. We're going to praise his name so we are. We're going to read from God's word. We're going to break bread. So if you're able to and you're able to join with us around the tables at home, we encourage you to do that. I'm going to lead you in communion so we are. And then after that as well, we're also going to hear from God's word. Nicola's going to be bringing the word this morning. So she is, as she would have been doing, had we been doing church in her own building as well. But we miss you. But we're here today. We're here to pray for one another. We're here to worship the Lord. And so I'm just going to take a moment. I'm going to commit this here time to the Lord in prayer. We're going to lift our church up together. So let's join in prayer. Will you, you know, join with me as well at home? Thank you, Jesus. Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for who you are, Lord. This this is different to us, Lord, but we thank you, Lord, that you're not caught off guard by this, Lord. You're not surprised by it, Lord. And we, we want to tell you, Lord, that we love you, Lord. We love you because you first loved us, Lord. We well, thank you, Lord, for the cross, Lord, of Calvary 2,000 years ago. We thank you, Lord, for the death, Lord, that you died, Lord, for each and every one of us, Lord. And we thank you for the victory, Lord, that we have, Lord, in you, Lord. And Father, I just pray, Lord, for all those that are joining online, Lord. Lord, there's a lot of fear and there's a lot of panic, Lord, I'd say, Lord. We understand why, Lord. And we just pray that you would just give them peace, Lord. Would you give them that assurance, Lord, that comes, Lord, from you, Lord? Would you just put your arms of love, Lord, round about them, Lord? And Father, Lord, you know, Lord, my friend, Mark, Lord, I just pray, Lord, today, Lord, that wherever, when Mark's lying in his bed, Lord, in the hospital, I pray that you'll strengthen him and encourage him. Lord, would you heal him, Lord, for your glory and for your honour, Lord? Lord, I thank you, Lord, for his friendship, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that he loves you, Lord, and he serves you, Lord. Lord, there's churches, Lord, gathered around, Lord, and Elam, Lord, praying for him, Lord, and further afield, Lord. And we just pray that you'll bless Mark, Lord, bless his family, bless Claire and the kids, Lord. And Lord, keep your hand upon them, Lord. And we give you all the thanks, we give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. I love you, Lord. Never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able oh, I will see of the goodness of God And I love your voice darkest night, you are close like no other, I've known you as a father, I've known you as a friend, and I have believed in the goodness of God, and all my life you have been faithful, and all my life you have been Goodness is 
running after, that's running after me. Your goodness is running after, that's running after me. My life laid down, surrendered now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, that's running after me. All my life you have been fed And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able oh, I will sing of the goodness of God And all my life you have been fed My life, you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am made, why will sing of the goodness of God? Why am I gonna sing of the goodness of God? Lord, we thank you, Lord. Lord, we love you, Lord. Lord, we thank you that in these uncertain days, Lord, that we can, we can look, Lord, to you, Lord, that we can lift, Lord, our eyes, Lord, to the hills, Lord, to who, where our help, Lord, comes from. Lord, our help, Lord, comes, Lord, from the maker of heaven. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that your eye, Lord, is it's on the spiral, Lord, and your eye, Lord, is on us, Lord. So, Lord, we just ask, Lord, that as we look, at, look to you, Lord, that our eyes, Lord, are upon you, Lord, our God. Lord. And God, I look to you. I won't be overwhelmed. Give me vision to see things like you do. God, I look to you. You're where my help comes from. Give me wisdom to know just what to do. single day, Lord, of our lives, Lord, is mapped out, Lord, because of you, Lord. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you're looking after us, Lord, every single moment, Lord, of every single day, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you're with us, Lord, that your promise, Lord, to us is that, lo, I am with you always, even to the end, Lord, of the age. And so, Lord, as we, Lord, even come around this little table today, Lord, with our emblems, Lord, this morning, we pray that you would just bless this, Lord, and that you would just undertake, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your sacrificial death, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you died for us, Lord. 
and we bless, Lord, your holy and your worthy name. Amen. Amen. Well, if you have your emblems at home this morning, then this is a, a, an opportunity for you to go and grab them and to, as we come around the table, I say that every year, I say that every week, so I do. And one of the things that, that I miss, I miss the team coming down at the front. I miss the guys that are going to be there and their smiling faces serving them, Ronnie serving the communion and all the guys standing around them and the, and the team behind me as well. And, but we're doing this. We believe uh, we're doing this for a reason because we're, we're children of God. So we are received. We're blood bought this morning. So we are. And this is what it says in God's word. It says in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, it says, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he said, Take it. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and you drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. You know, there's coming a day whenever he will come. And that's the great hope that we have. And so as we, as we partake here of the, the bread, we thank Jesus for his body that was broken for us on the cross. We, we give thanks, so we do, for all that he has done for us. And so we thank you, Jesus. This just symbolizes the blood that was shed for you and I symbolizes what Jesus has done through the power of his blood. And so we take in and we say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your blood, Lord, that was shed. Lord, for without the shedding of blood, there can be no remission of sin. I don't know about you, but it's good to be a child of God's witness. We're reminded in God's word. You know, it says in God's word, it says, John chapter 5, verse 24, it says, Most assuredly, I, I say to you, he who hears my word, and believes in him who sent me has everlasting life. And I love what Jesus then says after this. He says, and shall not come into judgment, but has passed from death into life. You know, we are who he says we are. If he says we're a child of God, then we'll always be a child of God. I'm reminded of a little story of a young boy who, who had committed his way to the Lord. He had, he had given his heart to Jesus. And he was saved, so he was at a young age. But he went to bed at night and he began to question, began to doubt, so he did, you know, whether or not he's still saved. So he goes back to his Bible, he lifts it up, he goes to John chapter 5, verse 24, and there he says, sees, yes, very clearly that he is, he now has everlasting life. The doubt goes away again, puts his Bible down, gets into bed, and all of a sudden the, the question comes again, am I still saved? Am I still saved? So he goes back and he checks the word of God. And there he says, there it is, I'm still saved. So he gets back into bed and the doubt comes again and he says to the enemy who's causing the doubts, he says, you, you can come to me so you can and you can question me, but why don't you go to God's word? Because it never changes and it tells me that I am a child of God. And so that's the great hope that we have. Our sins are forgiven, so they are. We're washed in the blood, so we are. We're saved. We're the children of God. And so I thank you for joining with us around the table online. And just before Nicola comes with God's word this morning and encourage her, we're just going to pray. We're just going to ask God to just bless God's word and undertake for us. Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord, uh, for your word, Lord. We believe, Lord, that your word, Lord, gives life, Lord. We believe, Lord, that your word, Lord, can still speak to us today, Lord. And so I pray, Lord, that in the various situations, Lord, uh, around our church, Lord, for people, Lord, that need prayer, Lord, that need healing, Lord, we pray that you just move, Lord, in their lives, Lord. Lord, we bring them up before you, Lord, and we say, Lord, would you, would you just bless, Lord? We thank, Lord, of Margaret Keith, Lord, and we just ask that you'd undertake, Lord, for her, Lord. Keep your hand upon her. Lord, would you bless her, Lord, would you see a brand, Lord, would you move, Lord, in his life, Lord, as well, Lord. We bring, Lord, Tom, Lord, Tom Tate, Lord, we thank you for him, Lord, we pray that you would just bless him, Lord. For David Irvine, Lord, we just ask that you'd undertake, Lord, just touch him, Lord, just move, Lord, in lives and situations. For Julie Sinclair, Lord, tonight, Lord, I pray that you would just move, Lord, in her life, Lord, would you save her, Lord. 
Would you help her, Lord, to place her trust, Lord, in you, Lord? Lord, for David Kidd, Lord, we just pray that you would just move, Lord, in his life and touch him. For John Mills, Lord, we thank you for him, Lord. And we pray that you would just cover him, Lord, in the blood, Lord. Lord, would you surround these people, Lord, with your presence, Lord? Would you uphold them, Lord? You're a good God. You're a faithful Father, Lord. You're with us till the end, Lord. Lord, where there's salvation, Lord, in the lives, Lord, of our loved ones, Lord, would you save them, Lord? We're, we're thinking of Jackie Willis, Lord, as well, Lord, and we pray that you'd save him, Lord. Just touch him. Lord, and we pray that you'd be with the family, Lord. But Lord, there's others, Lord. There are so many needs, Lord, in our congregation. Lord, we pray that you would just bless them. But Lord, bless Nicola. Undertake, Lord. Help her, Lord. Bring your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, good morning, everyone. It's good to be able to share with you this morning, albeit in a different way to how we planned. So when Darren was doing, uh, before Darren was doing communion, I was sitting on the other side of the camera and I was able to see some of the comments coming in. It's so lovely. I put on Facebook this morning about we're isolated, we're, we're not abandoned. God doesn't leave us. Um, and it's so nice just to see all of you joining in with us because as Darren said, we do miss you. Um, we are social people and social distancing is really hard, but it's so needed at this time. Um, but it, it's good to have these mediums to be able to share with you um, and to actually bring God's word this morning. So I just pray that as I stumble my way through this this morning, that God will bring something that will be able to bless you. Um, yeah. It would be normal in Lisburnium, that is this is Mother's Day, that I would normally bring a word. And normally that comes with um, something like a funny story about what goes on in our house or um, a few jokes about Darren. I'm not gonna do that today because he's sitting beside me and I might get a dig in the shoulder. But I think we've probably exhausted all the funny stories over the last couple of days of being stuck in. So we've another 10 days or so of this, so we'll see how that goes. But I wanted to bring a word and I believe that God put this on my heart weeks ago when I started to think about preparing um, for Mother's Day. And it was whenever things were going on obviously around the world in China and Italy but hadn't really come to our shores yet. And at the time I really wanted to talk about unity in the church and being part of a team. And the wee phrase that kept going around my mind was teamwork makes the dream work. As cheesy as it is, I love a bit of cheese. Um, and the, the phrase kept going round and round in my head. And I thought, that's what I want to speak on. That's what I want to bring a word on. And it just seems so much more fitting today, seeing everything that's going on and how we're being asked to work together to try to bring an end to this or try to minimise the impact that this is going to have. Teamwork makes the dream work. Um, there's going to be a lot of change over the next couple of weeks. Um, obviously, this is a change this morning. People's works are going to change. People's daily schedules are going to change. But we be encouraged this morning that we have a God who does not yeah. change. He never changes and he never leaves us. We're told in God's word in Malachi chapter 3, I, the Lord, do not change. And again in the New Testament, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today and forever. We believe that wholeheartedly. You know, in change, which can be hard to take, put your trust in the one who doesn't change um, to see you through it, to see you through the difficult times. I want to wish everyone a happy Mother's Day. My own mummy, who's watching this morning, and possibly Darren's mummy is watching as well, wishes both a happy Mother's Day. Um, we're sorry we can't be with you today, but we will celebrate after this is all over. I hope the ladies are all being spoiled today. And I just want to make special mention as well of the mums, or the ladies out there who aren't physical mums, but who are spiritual mums, because we have so many of those in our church, and we love you, and we so appreciate everything that you do to pour into our lives um, and to help us serve God in a better way and to show us how we love God. So teamwork makes the dream work. I'm conscious that a lot of people um, have, things have suddenly changed, schools have suddenly stopped. Um, we have one child who's devastated that school has suddenly stopped and we have one child who is kind of delighted but I don't think he understands the reason why it has stopped or the, the severity of the, the issue of why it stopped. Um, but there are two different ends of the scale. I'm um, conscious that um, there are a lot of teenagers who are suddenly stepped out into they don't know what with exams and, and the finish of school. And it got me thinking back to my Leavers Assembly all those years ago. I don't remember much about what was said, but I really remember an illustration that was used at the time. The speaker at that time, um, he talked about how you go out into this world, but you go out as a unit. You might be leaving what you've been used to behind, but how you still go out as part of the team of, of that school and how you go into your daily life and looking out for each other. And he used this illustration involving birds, um, random as it may seem, but it is actually true. Apparently when birds migrate from a, a, a colder climate to a warmer climate, they fly in a certain pattern, they fly in a V. It's something that I have noticed, as I say, I left school 20 years ago, uh, but this is still stuck in my head. And every time I see a V flying in the sky of birds, um, it reminds me of this story. And yes, it reminds me of the illustration of school, but it makes me think of church. 
um, and, and how we as a church can, can be for each other and to each other. And in the illustration, it talks about these birds who fly in a V as they're, they're trying to reach their common goal of reaching their destination of a warmer climate. And there's a couple of things that I wanted to, to take notice of, of the, the way the birds fly in this V. The one flies out in the front and it leads the way and it takes the most resistance of the wind that's coming ahead. But when it tires, it falls out of formation and somebody else steps up into its place. They look out for each other and they, they do that for a purpose. When one bird falls sick, apparently what happens is to fall out of formation with it until it's regained its strength to join the pack again. No birds left on its own when they're going on this destination. And the other thing is the current that the flapping wings of the other birds create um, cause less resistance for the other birds to fly. Flying in a pack makes it easier for the other birds around them. And you know, if God made birds like that, he certainly made us to be in community. He didn't create us to do life on our own. He didn't leave us to do life on our own. He says that once you, you know, he died, Jesus had died on the cross and ascended to heaven, he says, I'll not leave you. I'll send you the Holy Spirit. Um, and he comes and he gives us the strength to carry on. But we've got a role to play for each other and we've got a part to play for each other, to see each other through. You know, local church is my passion. It's always been my passion. Um, I am a people person. Um, does the church have its faults? Of course. Our church has its faults because we have our faults. Um, every church has faults, but you know what? It's God's idea and I just think it's beautiful when it works together how it's supposed to work. I want to take a reading today from God's word from 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and it talks about how we are all members of one body and you know, maybe you've never read the Bible before, maybe you're listening in this morning um, and you don't normally go to church and we're so glad that you've chosen to listen in today because you know this word is living and breathing and it gives us hope and it gives us life and you know I have found even in work over the last few while with the stress of everything that's going on, you're able to actually give people a, a bit of hope and, and, and a bit of comfort in what's going on. And this is where I get it from. This is where I get the hope and the comfort. It's not made up in my head. It comes from God's word. So 1 Corinthians chapter 12, beginning to read at verse 12 through to 31. You can follow on if you've got your Bible with, me, with you or else you can just listen in and I'll read it this morning. It says, for just as the, as the body is one and has many members and all the members of the body, though many, are one body in a body, so it is with Christ. For in one spirit we were all baptised into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and all were made to drink of one spirit. That means we're all, all come together to the one source. For the body does not consist of just one member, but of many. If the foot should say, because I'm not a hand, I don't belong to the body, would that make it any less part of the body? Of course it wouldn't. And if the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I don't belong to the body. Would that make it any less part of the body? No. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would be the sense of smell? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body. It says God arranged the members in the body. Each one of them as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but all belong into the one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On contrary, the part of the body that seems to be weaker are indispensable. And on those parts of the body that we think are less honourable, we bestow the greater honour, and our unpresentable parts are treated with greater modesty, which our more presentable parts do not require. You know, what that's just saying is we're all different. Every part of your body is different, but you need every bit of it to function as one. And that's what the church is like. We're all different, we're the members of the church, but we make up the body of Christ and everyone is needed in that. The word of God goes on, it says, but God has so composed the body, giving greater honour to the part that it lacked, that there may be no division in the body, but that the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together. If one member is honoured, all rejoice together. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. And God has appointed the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then miracles, then gifts of healing, helping, administrating, and various kinds of tongues. Are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, do all work miracles, do all possess gifts of healing, do all speak with tongues, do all interpret, but earnestly, but earnestly desire the higher gifts, and I will still show you a more excellent way. You know what Paul's saying there is, 
We're not all the same. We don't all have the same gifts, but we're all needed in the body of Christ. What really stuck out to me, I just want to pull a couple of thoughts out of that, um, just to give you something to think about today. What, what stood out to me, first of all, was in verse 18, we're told that God arranged each member of the body. It didn't just come together, just as your body doesn't just come together in a higgledy-piggledy way, um, and it's formed in your mother's womb, so God forms us, the body of Christ. We're not put together in a higgledy-piggledy way. It's not just to chuck them all in and see how things go. We're arranged in, in our order of how we're supposed to be in the body of Christ. You are placed there by God. You individually matter to God and he thought you mattered so much that he put one of you into the church that you're in or into the community that you're in or the family that you're in because he knew that that family or that, that church, that body of people needed one of you. You matter to God. You were put there to impact your community. And I think about that both as individuals. Um, we, we impact the community around us um, for who we are and as we are, but also our local churches, um, every church individually is put where it's meant to be um, to impact that community and such an effect that that can have whenever the body of Christ works together um, and, and, and does all that God intended it to be. Second we thought that I just wanted to bring out was that you are important, no one is insignificant. You know, I think in this time of what we're facing in society, that matters all the more. Everybody has to play their part. We've heard it from the medics over and over about how if we play our part now to flatten the peak of this virus, um, that what you do will help the medics and the doctors and the nurses in the hospital. And you know, in thinking of this this week, I've seen so many posts, um, and I love seeing it about how we couldn't do without the medics and the doctors and the nurses, and of course we couldn't, and we're so thankful for what they've done. But I love how it's brought in all of the other people who work as key workers um, in society and in the hospitals. When we think of the porters, the cleaners, the people who are stacking the shelves in Tesco so that you can go and hoard toilet rolls if that's your thing to do. Um, not that I'm condoning that, please don't do that. But everybody has their part to play in bringing something together. And so it is in church. We all have our part to play. We have different gifts and different talents. And I would encourage you, maybe you are having a time of social distance and uh, I hope you are, and self-isolating. <coughs> But maybe, don't cough down, that's a really bad time. <laughs> but maybe um, you could use this time just to think of, of how you, God, what God, gifts God has given you and how you can use those. You know, when we started out on our journey, um, the, probably the smallest team God has put me in is Team McWilliams. And we joke about this because there's me and Darren and obviously the two kids. Um, and it used to be before Ruben came along and called ourselves the three amigos, but now that he's here, we're, we're Team McWilliams. Um, and I used to think whenever we started out on this journey in ministry, you know, Darren has these gifts that he can use for God's glory um, in preaching and singing and playing. Um, and I used to think, well, I don't know what I'm going to do. And it used to freak me out because whenever, to start off with, if we'd gone to other churches to speak, they would have said things like, oh, does your wife sing? And his wife definitely does not sing. Um, I was trying so hard to be quiet this morning behind the camera because nobody needs to suffer with my singing. But... I used to think, well, what is my, what am I going to do with this? But you know, at that time, I had finished uni, I was starting work, and I, as I say, I love people. Um, talking is my thing to people one on one, um, and I can organise stuff, and I laugh because God put us together. Darren doesn't organise stuff, um, because God seemed to lack there and put me in, seemed to lack in me and put him in, um, but God brings us together, um, and it helps us use our gifts and our talents. And I look now at the things that I thought that made me good at my job, that made me able to speak to people, made me organise things well. And I look at how that fits into the church and I see exactly how God made those talents to be used now. Because I'm able to get around people and I'm able to speak to people and build relationships with people. And that's what church is all about. It's not all about standing at the front um, and preaching, as important as that is to feed God's people. But I have my role to play and God has given me my gifts and my talents to be able to do that. And just as, as he's given me mine, He's given you yours um, for a purpose and for a plan within the local church body and within your community. And I would just encourage you to ask God to reveal the gifts that he has placed inside you because you all have gifts and ask him how you can use that for the body of Christ um, to, to glorify his name because that's what it's all about and to bring people to his kingdom. And the last wee thing that I just wanted to talk about today was how a team will be more effective if it's unified. Um, it tells us 
um, in, in the passage that we read together, that the body is to be unified. There's no point in one of them working independently to the others. And so it is in the local church and in the global church. We're not meant to be just doing our own thing. We're meant to be plugged into community and serving together, um, to, to be cheering each other on. Um, and that's what I'm loving about this time. You know, I've seen so many people putting on about doing their church services online. And we were praying about it this morning. We were cheering all of those other churches on, um, just as we know they're cheering us on. And that's what the body of Christ is supposed Amen. to do. We're supposed to cheer each other on. You know, in the, the wee illustration you used of the birds, apparently the birds at the back, the, the illustration said the birds honk at the back. So they squawk. They're cheering and they're shouting and they're saying, we're behind you, guys at the front. So you keep going because we're following behind you. That's what we do with each other. If I had been able to share this message in church this morning, I wanted to share a video clip. Um, I shared it in the ladies' meeting a couple of years ago, and it's of the Brownlee brothers. Um, I know some of you will see it, have seen it, and Darren will maybe link it below um, the, the feed this morning. And the Brownlee brothers are triathletes, um, and a few years back they were competing in the World Triathlon Series in Mexico, and they were both out in front. And it was come to the last section of the running, and it was coming near the end. After all they had gone through, the end was in sight, and the first brother lost his way. He became exhausted, and in the footage you can see him just going in one direction, and the legs are still moving, but the head's totally disengaged. He'd lost it, he'd gone. So the funny thing in the clip is that you see one guy running past the two brothers for first place, but what happens next is magic, and I just think it's a picture of how we should be in the church. Um, the, the brother who was still had the energy and was still able to go, seeing that his brother who was ahead of him, his legs had gone and he'd lost it. So he runs up and he hooks his brother's arm around his shoulder. And he puts his arm around his brother's waist and he continues to run. And you can see him cheering his brother on. You can, hear, you can see him talking into his brother's ear and telling him to keep going, brother, and I've got you. And we'll get through this together and we'll see that end together. Um, and I think it's a picture of the church and it's lovely because as a team, you work together as a team, but when you're a family, it's something else. It brings it to another level. And you know, I want to speak especially to the Lisburnian guys who are listening this morning. We're a family. God brought us together as a family to do life together and to serve as a family. And I'm so privileged to be part of that. And I thank you for your part in that and how you've welcomed us in to the, the family in Lisburnian. Um, and as I say, when it's family, it takes it to another level. It takes that commitment to another level and that unity to another level. So not only does his brother put his arm around him and bring him up to the finish line so that they both finish together, he gets to just before the end of the finish line and he gets his brother and he puts his arm around his brother back, brother's back and he shoves him for all he's worth over that finish line. He puts him over the line in the position in front of him. He puts him over in second place instead of third place. He held back himself and put his brother over the line. And I just think that's, that's a picture of what what the body of Christ should be like. We prefer one another. You give each other the benefit of the doubt, time and time again. You forgive each other um, and, and you place other people's importance before your own because that's what God teaches us to do, because that's what God did for us. He didn't hold back his own son. He gave him for us. Um, and, and, you know, we're so thankful for that. And that's a picture of how we should treat each other. So he throws his brother over the line and he finishes, um, and they finish in second and third place. And I just think, with all that's going on today, will you try to communicate with each other? Will you show each other that we're the family of God? I know you will, um, but I challenge you, get in touch with someone today. I know that some of us have been in WhatsApp groups and things like that and cheering each other on and encouraging each other. Maybe there's someone in church who maybe wouldn't normally get involved so much, but you maybe think of that person today and send them a wee message and ask them how they're getting on and how they're doing. And then we just we just pray that this will in some way bless you, that you'll get something from today and that you'll just be spurred on to keep going for another few days. Thank you. So that's us, we are, uh, a families we are. This is how we'll be connecting with each other online over the next wee while. Uh, there will be other methods that may, may be used uh, through some apps like called Zoom and different things. And, and if we try that, you know, embrace it, just go for it. Um, plunge right in there and, 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 and go for it as well. Um, so we're going to close in prayer. I'm going to ask Nicola to pray as well, and then we're going to end the broadcast. But please be assured, we're praying for you. We're praying with you. We love you. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for taking the time uh, just to let, let us minister into you. Bless you. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for the opportunity, Lord, just to come around your word. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you're a God who doesn't change, that you're a God who's with us no matter what we face. 
And Lord, we pray for, for just the days ahead. Lord, we pray for our health service. We pray for the workers in that. Lord, we pray you'll give them Lord, just the strength to continue. Lord, that you'll protect them, Lord, from the virus. Lord, as they're, as they're working to help our loved ones. We just pray, Heavenly Father, that you'll go with us. We pray for every home, Lord, that's represented today. Lord, I just pray, Lord, your presence upon it in the days that while we're apart, Lord. And I just pray, Heavenly Father, you'll keep us all safe and all strong until we can come back together, Lord, as one community. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done for us. In Jesus' precious name, amen.